Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a fantasy action film, Gantz. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins at a subway station. Kay is reading a book focused on a successful job interview. He gets distracted for a moment by an ad of a naked woman posing for perfume. When someone familiar passes by in front of him, he takes a couple of steps forward and asks himself if it's Kato, his friend. While waiting for the train, someone falls onto the tracks. Kato takes a deep breath and jumps onto the track to help the guy. Looking around, he finally sees Kay's face clearly and calls him by name to ask for help. But Kay pretends not to know him, so Kato goes back to helping the drunkard. With the drunkard safely back on the platform, Kato struggles to climb on. Kay, unable to ignore him any longer, runs to offer his hand to help the other guy. Unfortunately, Kato pulls on his hand too hard, and Kay falls off the platform as well. The two don't feel anything. They then realize they're in the middle of a room. They find five other guys sitting on the floor, just as confused as they are. As the two look around, they discover a large matte black sphere sitting next to them. Kay tries to look for a way out. On the other hand, Kato notices the windows and attempts to pry one open. But one of the guys tells him that none of them works. Kay walks back, and Kato decides to confront him about ignoring him back at the station. He apologizes and explains that he didn't recognize Kato back then. They then talk about getting hit by the train, asking each other why they're still alive. They realize that the other guys in the room also died that day, but woke up in the room for some reason. Right then, the large sphere activates, and a naked woman, Kishimoto, materializes right in front of them. Kato covers her up, right before the large sphere starts playing music. Writings start appearing on it, informing the group that their old lives are gone, and that the large sphere is now in charge of their new lives. It hands them a mission to eliminate an onion alien. The large sphere then opens up, showing them numerous futuristic-looking weapons, as well as briefcases with their names on them, containing suits they can wear. Only Kishimoto wears the suit. The group are given 20 minutes to complete the mission, and are then transported to another part of Tokyo. Tired of all the mind games, one of the guys decides that he'll be heading home. Nishi, one of the more introverted and quiet guys, stops him. He explains that they're in a TV show, and are currently hypnotized. If they stay and play the game, they have a chance at winning $100,000, which catches everyone's attention. Kei notices their target just a couple of feet away from them. Nishi informs them to take a good look at it, since they'll have to chase it down. The target Onion Alien runs away when it realizes that it's been seen, so everyone chases after it. After a long chase, they finally corner it in a garage. It offers them an Onion Leak. One guy who seems to be a thug walks up to it. He lifts his futuristic gun and presses the trigger, but nothing happens. Kato catches up to the group and finds them pointing all of their guns at the alien. After a minute, a body part from the alien explodes like mashed potato. While the group exclaims over the fact that the guns are real, the alien attempts to protect itself by clawing at what it can reach with its long fingernails. It slashes the group's knees, which angers them, and they start shooting at it again. Kato stops them too late, and the alien explodes. The thug continues to shoot at the obliterated corpse of the alien. Kato tackles him to stop him. Without their knowledge, a figure stands behind them. It drops a plastic filled with onion leeks. The thug arrogantly asks the figure what he's looking at. The figure takes a swipe at him, cutting his left leg off swiftly, causing the thug to fall to his knee in front of the figure. He's lifted by his head as the group points their gun at the figure. As the thug struggles, he accidentally swipes the figure's wave off. They realize that this figure is the older version of the onion alien they just killed, which could mean that it's the father. As the group shoots at him, he uses the thug's body as a shield from all the blasts. The thug explodes on everyone. He catches up and finds the alien walking up to a shaking Kato. Before the alien can do anything, Kishimoto pops out of nowhere and attacks it, pushing it far back from the two. She realizes too late the strength the suit gives her and walks up to Kato, asking him if he knows what's going on. The alien straightens up and moves to attack the remaining members of the group. Nishi throws a rope that entwines around it. He approaches Kei and hands over the gun, encouraging him to kill it, pointing out the fact that it has killed everyone. But Kei is unable to pull the trigger, so Nishi takes the gun from him and kills the alien instead. Soon after, the remainder of the group materializes back in the mysterious room. Nishi reveals that it's been a while since anyone else survived. Kato asks him what he knows. He directs their attention back to Gantz, the large sphere sitting in the middle of the room. An older male who should have been killed materializes next to the group as well. Nishi reveals that no matter how injured one is, as long as they're still alive and breathing, Gantz will transport them back. The group was then given points for how they contributed to that evening's mission. Nishi is the only one who receives points for killing their target alien. Kato is heated, because Nishi didn't do anything to save the others. Before a fight can break out, the group is transported back to reality. 
Unable to go back to his normal life, Kay looks up Kato in the directory. He quickly realizes that it's been a while since the directory's been updated. There wasn't even a building anymore at the address he found. Defeated, he goes back to the garage where the incident with the onion alien happened. The destruction is still there, so everything that happened that night was real. While exploring, he runs into Kishimoto, who's trying to look for anyone in the group. She then asks Kay if she can stay with him for that evening. It's revealed that Kishimoto recently broke up with her boyfriend. She committed suicide the night she met the group because her boyfriend was living with someone else, and she didn't know what else to do. She pulls out Kato's jacket, telling Kay that she had borrowed it and wanted to return it to him. They find a planner in his pocket, and Kay unearths that Kato got of Juvie. As they're discussing Kato, Kishimoto is determined to only see the good in him. She admits that she hopes she had met him earlier. Kay comments that she must be thinking this way since she wouldn't have died if she had met him earlier. Offended, she turns around and lies down to sleep. Right then, Gans calls the group again, and they wake up back in the room. They find three new people with them, a woman, a grandmother, and a toddler who's crying in his grandmother's arms. This time Gans gives them a mission to eliminate a Tanaka alien. They're given the same weapons and brief faces filled with suits. Nishi explains that no matter what, they will get called every time they're needed. They're tasked to eliminate alien threats, and anyone who doesn't survive will get replaced. Sadly, the grandmother and toddler duo are taken out almost instantly by the Tanaka alien, as soon as it runs into them. Kay finds their body as he materializes on the location. He's almost killed by the Tanaka alien as well, but is able to fight off the attack with his gun. The Tanaka alien charges his laser to attack Kay, but Nishi materializes in front of him and absorbs the attack. Distracted, the alien directs his attention to Nishi instead of Kay. Nishi is brutally beaten up and realizes that his suit has been destroyed. He calls for the group's help. Kato goes to save him, but it's too late. Nishi gets the full blast of the alien's laser. Before he dies, Nishi reveals the rule that if they're able to collect 100 points, they'll get a chance to bring him back to life. Kei doesn't understand, but Nishi dies before he can explain further. The group gets into a fast and furious fight against the Tanaka alien. Kei finally makes use of his suit's full potential and successfully shoots the alien before it can destroy him with its laser. However, since he's close to the range of the attack, he gets blown along with the alien. By good luck, he materializes back to the room in time, completely healed. Gantz then activates to give out their score. In the last mission, only K scores a total of 7 points. He asks Gantz to reveal what happens if they get 100 points, and they find out that they can choose from the 100-point menu. They can either erase their memory and set themselves free from the missions, or resurrect a person from memory, which is what Nishi told about before he died. K wakes up back at home. This time, he's still wearing the suit. As he's testing the suit's abilities, he gets a call from his classmate, a manga writer. She asks him to meet her, so that she can show him the manga she's working on. When they meet up, Kei realizes that the hero she's working on is based on him. He comments that it reminded him of the old him, and he explains further that when he was younger, he would often stand up for kids who got bullied. It was actually how he met Kato and became a friend of his. On the other side, Kishimoto drops by Kato's building to return the jacket she had borrowed. They talk about what's going on in the room and with Gantz, she confesses that she really wanted to die that night, but now she wants to live after meeting him. Appreciating Kishimoto's confession, Kata reveals that he was in Juvie before, because he killed his abusive father. He confides that he can't leave his brother behind again. The next evening, Gantz calls the group again for a new mission. This time they recognize that they're needed and are ready. They're joined by three new guys and are tasked to eliminate an ill-tempered alien. Kata informs the group that they're not dead yet and encourages them to fight, so they can survive together. He hands over the suits, but the Buddhist monk refuses to believe him, and announces that he's lying bullshit, cautioning everyone from listening to him. Kei gets into an argument with Kato, disclosing that he thinks Kato isn't worried about the group, but rather just wants to go home and hide. He understands now that Nishi was right about Kato. The group is then transported in front of a museum somewhere. One new guy wearing glasses points his gun at one of the large statues in front of the museum, which explodes after a moment. The real ill-tempered alien then comes alive to destroy the group. Kei cockily confronts the statue, thinking that he knows enough to bring it down on his own. The Buddhist monk seeks refuge at one of the museum's exhibits, while the rest of the group scrambles to work together and brings the alien down. Kei successfully protects everyone and brings down the alien on this mission. The two get into another argument, as Kato points out that Kei didn't really handle things since people were killed. But Kei argues that it wasn't his fault, since they didn't run fast enough. But then, Kei wonders out loud why they aren't back yet back in the room, the timer runs out, only for it to run another round of 20 minutes. One of the women there with limps of an exhibit. She tells them it hurts before dying. Kay then realizes that means there's another alien before the mission ends. The group heads inside. 
they find the bloody corpse of the Buddhist monk. K stops in front of a thousand armed Buddha, and immediately comes to life and starts attacking him. It slashes and slices all over him, and the suit isn't strong enough to keep him protected. Kato concedes that K is still as stubborn as ever, and shares that he always wanted to be like him. He acknowledges that maybe K is right, and he's just a hypocrite because he just wants to go home to his brother. Kato goes to fight the alien. It speaks to him, and announces that humans attacked and killed first. He vows revenge for what was done, and promises death for everyone. Kishimoto shoots at the ugly handy alien, and encourages Kato to escape. The alien switches its attention to Kishimoto. She points her gun at the alien again, and then realizes that her gun has been sliced in half. Kato stands up to fight again, this time unsheathing a futuristic katana. Kato fights the alien, but is defeated at last. Before it can kill him, Kishimoto jumps in front of the alien, and is stabbed through by its many swords. He reaches out to catch her and holds her, as she gasps her last dying breath. She tells Kato that he has to go back to his brother. She reaches out for his cheek to bring him closer for a farewell tongue massage, but she passes before their smelly lips can meet. In anger, Kato picks up the katana again, and launches another attack. This time Kato is unfortunate enough that the alien hits its mark. His blood drips down the alien's head, as it brings his body over its head. It throws Kato away, close enough that Kei can reach him. The alien announces its plan for revenge again. It assures the destruction of all. Kei looks at Kishimoto's body as well as Kato's, and musters enough strength to reach for Kato's katana to attack the alien. Realizing that the katana is not enough, Kei dives for a gun, and points it at the alien. However, it successfully hides behind its many swords, and Kei is only able to destroy the swords. Right then, the alien transforms into its true form, growing bigger than the first one. The rest of the group are waiting just outside the museum. Kato, with his last strength, throws his gun towards K, who catches it midair and runs up the alien's hormone let go arm, shooting at it. K jumps toward the alien, but it catches him by the mouth and swallows him whole. We then hear shooting sounds inside the alien's body. It seems K successfully destroyed the alien from the inside. Soon after, K ends up back in the museum, searching for Kato. He wakes him up, and Kato tells him that he knew K could do it. K begs him not to die, and assures him that they'll be transported back to the room soon. Kato thanks him, since he can go back to his brother because of him. K notices that the suit Kato's wearing is leaking liquid, which means the suit has failed. He calls out to Gans to hurry up and bring them back. K begs Kato to hold on, as he's transported back to the room. However, only three of them return. K asks Gans to show him who died. Kishimoto and Kato show up in the gallery. Upset, K demands Gans to bring Kato back and the sphere replies by showing him the list of the 100-point menu. He realizes that he can bring Kato back if he completes the 100 points. After class the next day, the classmate offers the next chapter of her manga to Kei, but he refuses, stating that he's not in the mood to read it. At the subway station, a child drops his hat on the track. Kei jumps in to retrieve it for him. The train's fast approaching, and Kei's mesmerized when he sees its light. The classmate tries to call for his attention, but he's frozen on the spot. She begs him to move, and offers her hand. He finally snaps out of it, and reaches for her. He apologizes, and she cries, admitting that she loves him, and begs him not to die. That night, Kei visits Kato's younger brother. The movie ends with Kei and the rest of the group back in the room and in front of Gantz, for their next mission. This time, they're all determined to survive. Kei agrees to lead the group, and tells the new recruits that they're not dead yet, and reveals what's waiting for them after achieving the 100 points. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.